Okay, so I think we should be, yeah. Okay, so the observer. Uh, okay, so the thing to realize is that um, the way I like to do it is like, okay, one way to see it, see it is like, the, or the way I do the observer is like, what, am I experiencing myself as an object right now? And I always, but I like to teach it with the mug, you know. <coughs> so what are the qualities of being an object? Well, the qualities of being an object are it's limited. Yeah, an object is limited. And, and if there is something, if something is limited, like if something has a shape, or if something can pass, or something can change, and if I'm experiencing myself as that which is limited, or which is changing, then I am experiencing myself as an object. So the first question, or the, the way I sort of do it for myself, it's not really a question, is how am I experiencing my sense of self in this moment? You know, but I like to teach it in this way, or I mean, okay, I'll share it from a different angle because we've all heard the mug many times. You know, so if I was doing self inquiry on myself, it would be like, is there, uh, at the moment, there's no experience of body at the moment, but if there, for many, many years, what I used to do, and now it's more, most of the time, I don't have any experience of being a body, but for many, many years, what I used to do is like, if I had an experience of being a body, I'd go, well, okay. I would have this awareness that my body is like in this location and seems to have this form and these limits. Well, that's an object. If, you're, if there is awareness of a body in this room and how big it is and how tall it is or, or whatever, thank you, <coughs> whatever it is, then that, then that is an object. And then that, so what is observing the sense of being a body? Now, the so the observing, of the body, what's observing, and then I, oh yeah, so there is there is that which is witnessing this, the shape, because if there's a shape, there's the witness of the shape, yeah. So that would just I could completely like let go, and then suddenly the body would disappear as you'd unhook from the body, because uh, the once you're in the witnesser, or if it's not if it's not, then go to the witnesser of that witnesser. Okay, if the witnesser is observing the body, but the witnesser is still has awareness of the body, then go to the witnesser of that witnesser, because that witnesser or observer is interested, has some interest in the body. So that observer, which is still interested in the body, well, what's observing that observer? And then, you know, as you go back into these deeper observers, you see what, what gives you an experience of something in the realm of being of form is that there's still some tracking of it. You know, it still has some level of meaningfulness. So if you then go to the observer of the observer, which, still has, which is still tracking the body, usually that observer, the body doesn't exist. Now that's how it was for me, but you can, you can go. As you go deeper and deeper into the observer, you have the interest, if you go to the first observer and still things are being tracked, like the body's being tracked, or time's being tracked, or, or whatever it is. Now that might be two things, but also, but if that's not the biggest thing, it could be like, you know, if anyone's suffering pain or, or, or something, then usually that would be the big thing. So if there's pain, but that usually has a shape or an energy to it. And so what's observing that? Also, some pe sometimes if there's, you know, more is uh, thoughts. This is very, very important because that's one of the major, uh, major addictions is thinking. And for me, like being in the observer of thinking is really uh, easy. But first you have to get the spiritual experience of, um, of realizing, like, and the w way to do it is to realize, like, uh, oh, let's talk about it this way. Like, if there's clouds passing in the sky, like a cloud passes by and a cloud passes by and a cloud passes by, and all these clouds are passing by, then there must be that which is observing the clouds passing by. And the observer of the clouds passing by is not a cloud, is it? Because that which watches, oh, there's a, there's a fluffy white cloud going past, now there's a black cloud going past, there's a grey cloud going past. So the observing of clouds passing by, the observer is not a cloud. And that's quite, I think we can all experience that. So thoughts are like that, you know. Oh, there's a thought, there's a little thought goes by, another thought goes by. But there's something which observes thoughts, which is not thoughts, you know. And then, you, and then I, there was the spiritual awareness that, you know, because 
thinking is such a major addiction that you know one doesn't have detachment one hasn't got you know it's a big experience spiritual experience to realize oh I don't have to be enmeshed in my thoughts there is observing of thoughts and the observer of the thoughts and then when there's clear recognition that the observing of thoughts there is to there's a detachment and then it's like and also and then it's really really fun because then you start to get space and then you can go well if the observer of the thought still is aware of thought, so let's go to the observer. So, so for me, it would be like used to. It was like when I used to be really in thinking, I would feel like I'm in my head, and I'd feel like this energy. And then that, that's an object. So, what's observing the head and all that energy going to the thoughts? Ah, yeah, there's something observing that. Then what's observing that observer? And then you start, to, and then the thoughts start to disappear. So that's the way to get rid of thoughts. If you're in thoughts, that's the worst one. Because you can't think about where the observer is, you know, because that's not, not, not going to work. Okay, I'm not in the... Hi. Hello. Hello. Let's see. You, can't, you can't go to the... You can't sort of think about the observer, like, I'm not sure. Also, the other thing is, if people get stuck in it, is um, being, uh, trying to imagine the observer. You know, what, what observes imagination? What observe, you know, imagination is like making pictures. But pictures are objects. So if a picture comes up and, and passes by, then what, what observes pictures come and go? And is that which is observing visualization of pictures, can that which is observing visualization of pictures be a picture? No, it can't, because a picture is an object. I can have a picture of when I'm three years old, and then suddenly I can have no pictures, and then I can have another picture. So thoughts come and go. Also is to recognize that anything that can come and go or change or move cannot be me. So sometimes when people get stuck in feelings in the body or whatever, another way, another trick, shall we say, is if it's changing, you know, if you notice, like, say there's a pain in the stomach or there's a headache or whatever it is, but if it's subtly changing, that which is observing the change cannot be the change. So if I put my, if I put my hand here and then change it around, you know, you cannot be my hand. Or if it's suddenly slowly changing, the observer of the hand is not the hand. The observer of the change is not the change. So that which observes all things that come and go, that change, uh, that also if there's something here, another one is like if there's something here and, and you've experienced it not being here, it can't be you. You know, like today if I feel this pure presence with, and there's just timeless now, and there's no sense of body or thoughts. And then tomorrow, there's the experience of my body and my thinking and everything. Then this body and this thinking is not me. Because it wasn't here yesterday. So the, the essence of who I am must always be here. It cannot, it can, like, you know, like time can disappear if you go to the observer of time. L location can dis disappear as when you go to that which observes location. Thoughts disappear when you go to the observer of thoughts. So anything that can come and go, it can't be it. So there is something here which is not coming and going, which cannot change, which is not limited. So now if you do the observer and you still experience limitation, then that then becomes the new thing to be the observer of. Okay, I'm now the observer of the body, but still thoughts are going past. We'll go to the observer of thoughts. Okay, I've gone to the observer of thoughts, but I'm still aware of time. Well, what's observing time? You know, what observes time is not interested or hooks into time and doesn't identify with time and has no interest in time. Go to the observer of that and see <coughs> if time exists there. And if something is existing, <coughs> another one is like when you go to the observer, even if you feel very, very expansive and limitless, but if that expansion has a limit to it, like, oh, I'm, I'm just, like, I'm as big as this room, or I'm like as big as this world, or I feel I'm like expanding, or but then what observes expanding? You know, so what's observing all the expanding and and even and if it's like very very almost limitless, but what's observing almost limitless? Uh, as soon as you, so, but don't hook. Once you go to the next level, don't you know? If you hook back into the into back into thoughts or back into the body, you'll just go get sucked right in. Another thing to know is thoughts. You know, thoughts is one of the biggest addictions. And one of the things I heard from one of my spiritual teachers was, 
You know the next thought that happens in your mind is just a thought. Don't pick it up. You know, there is no thought that's special. You know, this is the big trick, you know, like pe waiting for the next thought which might be meaningful or special. So once you're in that timeless now, when you're, in, when you're in the observer, know that there is no next thought that you need to pick up. You know, because that hooks people, spiritual seekers, back in. It's like they're in the timeless now. And then another a thought emerges and something wants to know what the thought is. And the thing to know is that's just a meaning, meaningless thought. Don't pick it up. Yeah, don't pick it up. Every thought is meaningless. Uh, you know, because if you're in a timeless, if you're in the timeless now, as soon as you pick up a thought and think it's meaningful, you'll just hook straight out. You know, so no, no thought is, is meaningful. Okay.